instituted the occasion of celebrating Pride Shabbat in Pride Month in the month of June to invite a member of our extended community um, to come and talk to us. It is my pleasure uh, that finally, after a number of attempts, Nick Teich, who grew up here and is a very busy person, um, it was able to say yes. So what should I tell you about Nick? Uh, Nick has been, uh, is a licensed clinical social worker, has founded and been running the first ever summer camp for transgender and gender variant kids. Uh, he's the author of Trans 101, A Simple Guide to a Complex Issue, um, which for many of us has been a very important book to help our learning curve. Um, hailed as the go-to source for students, professionals, friends, and family members. He works full-time on all of the Harbor Camps programs, serving as camp director when they're in session. He lives in the Boston area with his wife, Erica. Uh, Rebecca, his daughter, is here tonight with us, as her mom and dad, of course, and um, two dogs who I think are in the Boston area still, uh, all of whom join him in camp this summer. Will you welcome Nick Teich, our guest speaker on this Pride Shabbat? Hi, everyone. Um, Rebecca had to go to bed, so uh, <laughs> my mom took her home. But uh, it's really great to be here. My mom was reminding me that when I had my bat mitzvah here, that I now refer to as my bar mitzvah, just to, for sake of ease, um, there was a, a temporary arc and a temporary bima because we had just moved over here from um, down the street. So it's really uh, great to be back. and. Um, kind of, you know, here to, to talk about this. Um, I think, first of all, that it's amazing that there is a Pride Shabbat. Um, it's not something that I thought of or um, thought would be a thing, but I, I think it's, it's really wonderful because it recognizes the diversity in the community and, um, you know, celebrates it, which is, which is wonderful. I have a lot of friends um, who are transgender and, and LGBTQ who grew up in religions and in you know churches and temples maybe that were not so um, affirming and not so welcoming. Um, and I think what's been so amazing to me is that the, my background as a Reformed Jew, um, even though I complained about going to Hebrew school, um, I think that's the sentiment that might be shared <laughs> with some uh, some people in this room, but um, it, it really gave me a foundation that I feel very proud of and I feel like is important for my wife and I to raise our daughter in as well up in Boston um, because it's such a welcoming community and is um, there's just, not not a crazy agenda that you might see with some other religions. Um, and of course, what uh, tikkun olam, which is something that I think about, you know, doing good deeds in the world. And that's something that I feel like um, is what I get to do all the time with, um, with my camp. So to go back a little bit, I was, um, I guess, bat mitzvahed here in 1996, which seems like a million years ago. And um, I then transitioned at age 24 um, from female to male, sort of knowing that it was something that was brewing my whole life, but not knowing it consciously, and finally figuring it out all in the span of six months and just kind of saying, okay, this is who I am and being able to transition to very, very um, welcoming and wonderfully um, amazing parents. My dad, Rob, who's over there, and my mom who, who took my daughter uh, back to the house. But I just feel extremely lucky. And I know that a lot of people don't have families like that and, and communities like that. So when I was young and when I was here, I was going to camp in the summer, a camp in Maine. That was very important to me because even though it was a girls camp, it was a place where I felt like I could be myself and I could just be me and people knew me for who I was and I had 
a haircut like this for a while, for a long time, until probably sixth grade, and people just kind of, you know, knew that that was me, and and um, I was able to really be myself, and camp was a very formative place for me, and so as I got older, I stopped working there because I had to get a year-round job, which I got rid of uh, when I could go back to camp, and was um, able to kind of step back a little bit and volunteer once a, uh, once a year for a week-long charity camp that kept me in the camp spirit, but um, also allowed me, obviously, to have my other job. And I was at that camp for a number of years, knowing the people that ran it very well. And when I told them that I was transitioning, they told me at first that was great. They were glad that I was becoming who I was and that I was going to be happy. Um, and then something happened in the interim and they one day called me on the phone um, the board of directors with a lawyer on the line and they said this was 2007 or 8 and said you know for the good of the kids we can't have you back at our camp um, we just don't feel that you would be uh, good for the kids to be there we don't want to deal with it so best wishes um, and that was something that was extremely surprising to me and very difficult um, because I had never, luckily, never experienced that kind of discrimination. So um, I thought about it for a while, and I said, what about kids who know that they're trans as kids? Um, unlike me, now with the internet and with all the documentaries, you can find one every night of the week on, on TV, um, what do they do? And this was back in uh, 2008, and I, I thought, what about a camp for trans kids? I could start it, I have camp experience, it'll be a week-long thing, I'll do it on the side, and um, I was able to do that and started renting a camp in Connecticut, got a board of directors together, became a nonprofit, and went for it, and it was amazing. The first summer we had 40 kids whose parents for some reason trusted them with us, um, and we had a great time, and it was always the philosophy was always to be a camp where it was just camp and it was just fun and it wasn't about tell me about your gender identity and let's talk about this because these kids are already in therapy and they're constantly fielding questions uh, year round about their gender so it was yeah you happen to be transgender and let's go canoeing let's play baseball let's have campfires and um, it has since, I'll skip the whole time in between, but since 2009, uh, grown to over, we serve over 550 campers a summer, and we were able to um, launch a capital campaign, buy our own property in New Hampshire, and run camps all summer long, and then we also have a satellite in California. So it all of a sudden became my full-time job, and I do fundraising and camper recruitment, and. Uh, what I love to hear is that these kids are just having fun and they're able to forget about all of the stuff that they're saddled with the rest of the year because of who they are. And I think that is very, very important and is the main reason why I do what I do and, and why I love it. And with Harbor Camps, we started that as sort of an umbrella organization because we wanted to emulate this in a couple of other communities. I didn't feel like I wanted my whole thing to only be trans youth. And so last year we started a camp for kids with skeletal dysplasia. And um, within the next two years, we're gonna start one more for kids with craniofacial anomalies. And so I'm really excited about that because it's all about coming together, being at camp, having fun with people like you and not having to talk about it if you don't want to. And uh, coming, I'm a, a social worker, and so my background is in clinical social work, which is therapy, and um, which is wonderful and great, and there's a place for it, and I feel like camp is, is, is a time to get away. So that's kind of how I came, came to start camp, and um, I just feel like I'm very, very lucky to be able to work with these wonderful kids and just see them be able to be themselves in a way that they can't in um, many other places. And so while camp has historically been a white upper middle class, often Jewish thing that um, you know has 
sort of been in the Northeast, um, we've really been able to open it up because most people who are looking for their kids to go to camp have some kind of background. They went to camp or maybe family or friends went to camp. But with transgender kids, they are all over the map, right? And so for a lot of these parents, even sending their kid for one week is a big thing because it's foreign to them. And so we are getting a lot of kids for whom camp is a new thing and it's not affordable. And so a big part of what I do is raise money to uh, give scholarships and financial aid for kids who can't afford that because I feel like that should never be a barrier. So um, again, you know, I am very thankful to Surge and to the community for, for having me come here. Um, I'm very thankful more than I think I ever thought I would be for having the background that I have had as a reformed Jew and to be able to be in a wonderful community that is so accepting and, and open and um, to be able to play with kids all summer and you know be a parent now and all of these things that I think in 1996 standing up here I didn't even have a clue what what it would become so again thank you so much for for having me I'm happy to talk more about camp to people who might be interested afterward and I think we're gonna try to show a video of some of our campers we'll see if it happens